Good morning, Enid. It is Thursday, October 29th. Thank you for joining us on this cool, rather cool, 44 degree morning. Football weather, I know you're such a football fan, but to me, 44 degrees makes it football weather. We're glad that you're here. High today is gonna to be around 61. I think tomorrow will be a rainy day. Thanks for joining us. Grab a cup of coffee. I'm Steve Kine. And I'm Sarah Delangel. Sarah, welcome back. We missed you last week. Yes, it's very nice to be back. I actually missed being here last week, too. I understand that you uh, went on a trip to Canada. Yes, I did. Must be nice. It, it was really nice. It wasn't long enough, though. So what do we need to do this morning? Well, this morning we have a lot going on. Obviously, it's Halloween this weekend, so we have lots oh, of lots going on the, um, around town this weekend. But with Halloween this weekend, it also brings Thanksgiving right around the corner. So our special guest um, will have to do with giving. Um, that's great. With the season that's coming up. So, um, Enid, go ahead and grab a cup of coffee. It's time to rise and shine. Thanks, AJ. Good morning, Nina. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday, October 29th. Man, oh man, this month just keeps on moving. And don't look now. November is when? Sunday? It's Sunday, yes. Wow. Incredible. Right now, it's a cool 44 degrees, mostly clear skies out there. The wind's out of the northeast. If you're a pilot watching this morning, well, the wind's out of the northeast around 12 miles per hour. It's going to be a very pleasant 61 degrees today. But, however, I think the weather's going to change on uh, Friday with rain coming. You know, it's only 44, so we're 12 degrees from freezing, and we have our little freezing Oklahoma map, and uh, that shows typically when a first freeze in north central, northwest Oklahoma. So, you know, it's around the 1st of November, so we're days away from reaching that cold 32 degrees. If it only got this cold, that'd be great. Well, I think this is pretty cold. This is kind of freezing for well, you're me. you're California, but... and you're... You probably think this is below zero weather. It's pretty cold. Yeah. Well, tell us, Sarah, about the three-day forecast, because we got a big weekend. What's going to go on? Well, like you said, we're getting closer to that freeze, um, so our temperatures are definitely um, lower than what they used to be. Um, we're looking at staying um, under um, 76 degrees this weekend, um, so it's going to be a cool, uh, cloudy, cloudy weekend. Yeah. And it's, it's just each weekend is so jam-packed. Derek Silas, our bow tie guy, will fill us in on what's going on a little bit later on. But we've got college football, we've got high school football, you've got fall festivals, you've got all kinds of events. Just exciting time in Enid and, and across our great state. Well, we're certainly glad that you're with us. Hope you're enjoying your cup of coffee this morning. One important opportunity for everybody this weekend is to fall back. Yep. 2 a.m. Sunday is the official time, but I, I'm so ahead of the game, and it drives my wife crazy. I'll even set the clocks, you know, maybe Friday night or Saturday morning or something. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and fall back, and so I don't wait for that, and she just shakes her head because I go through the house changing all the clocks, and she just, That's oh. pretty good. I usually do it two months after it's taken place. <laughs> For some reason, I knew that about you, Sarah, <laughs> that you were kind of two months behind. But anyway, folks, fall back, and, uh, th and then November shows up. So that's really incredible. By the way, we're kind of dressed in thunder colors this morning, and um, we need some thunder coffee cups. Hint, hint. You know, thunder had a big win, first game of the season. So let's find out what happened in uh, Oklahoma overnight with the Oklahoma Minute, and that's the bow tie guy, Derek Silas. <laughs> Good 
warning unit. Oklahoma's statewide ban against texting while driving will go into effect Sunday, November 1st, and carries a $100 fine. Google Fiber will consider Oklahoma City for its super-fast broadband network. And according to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, Oklahoma fourth graders showed significant reading improvement in 2015. Saturday, OU plays Kansas at 2.30 in Kansas, and it will air on FS1. OSU will play Texas Tech in Texas at 2.30, and it will air on ESPN. Last night, as he said, Oklahoma City Thunder had its first game of the season against the San Antonio Spurs. The score was Oklahoma City 112, San Antonio 106. And the game two of the World Series was also last night, with Kansas City Royals scoring seven against New York Mets at one. Uh, that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Steve and Sarah. Very good. Thanks, Derek. You notice that bow tie he has? Yes, I feel like I missed out on so much these last couple of weekends. Well, I, I didn't want to point this out to our audience, but <clears throat> last week was our pink program. Yes, I did see that. And that appears to be pink today. <laughs> I, oh, it goes along with your falling back, right? You're right, a little right. behind I'm the time so of setting so the clocks back. You gotta give me two months. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, hey, we're excited the Thunder wins. Uh, one, was uh, winning their game last night, and it doesn't look that close, but, you know, KD and Westbrook was hitting the free throws at the last, so that's, that's what it takes. Speaking of sports, Friday night lights. Let's look at what the football games for uh, Friday night. Uh, you know, Enan needs a big win. Stillwater comes to town, play the Pioneers. Enan comes off a big win of beating Lott and Ike last week. I think it was 44-41. So Enid uh, will entertain Stillwater this Friday night. And Sarah, look at the other big game, Chisholm and Perry. See, you know, I'm, of course, I'm a Maroon. I'm from Perry. I did go to school contrary to what you think, you know? <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's a big game, Chisholm probably, yeah. Perry, maybe, maybe not, but anyway, look at all of those games, so. Have you had a chance to go to any of those games this uh, season? No. Okay. No, but I have, I have watched highlights, you know, they have these features where it's amazing about technology, you can, uh, you know, just bring up the school and then they have all these these playbacks of uh, highlights of the game. Pretty neat. Really, pretty incredible. Really incredible. Well, to find out what's going on this weekend, I know we got college football, Oklahoma State's playing, I think, at Texas Tech, and just a lot of events going on in Enid. And to clue us in on what's going on, here's Derek again. Yes, that's right. We have a lot of events going on. First of all, we have the United Way Chili Wing Chili Cook-Off. The location of the event is at the Enid Event Center. The cost is $5, and that will be tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. All the proceeds go to the United Way. Then we have the Enid Symphony Orchestra presenting Ariana Castellanos, and she will be a flamenco piano pian pianist, and that's at the Enid Symphony Center, Saturday, 8 p.m., and Sunday, 2 p.m. Tickets are $30 and $70. Then we will have the Kiwanis train ride from 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Saturday, October the 31st at Meadow Lake Park. Tickets are $1. And that's what's going on. Back to you, Steve and Sarah. Typical weekend, 47 things going on in Enid. Yes, so many exciting things along with all the um, festivals that are going on around Enid. So it's going to be a fun weekend. Um, but now for uh, Steve's favorite segment of the show. Um, so I'm not going to guess what kind of cows these are, but we're going to bring out the cows. <laughs> Hosteins. Come on now, Sarah. Um, if you guys have any questions, any recommendations, anything you guys would like to share here on the show, just email at asksteve at ena.org, and we'll make sure we share that for you. Yeah, if you want to send er uh, Derek some bow ties to wear on the show or send us some coffee or something like that, somehow you can find us. But seriously, if you have a suggestion for a program of, of a guest that's coming to town, or uh, even we've had some uh, vacation pictures. We need to get your vacation pictures from Canada. Yeah. And put those on there. But anyway, we'd love to hear from you. Good morning, Enid. It's Thursday, October 29th. Again, holding steady at 44 degrees this morning. Winds out of the northeast at 12. High today is going to be a very pleasant 61. But I think things are changing tomorrow with the chance of rain up to 80% on Friday. So... We'll see what happens. It's 7.39, and I am so excited about our guest because it has to deal with food, about giving back, and about making a difference. And so Jamara has our special guest, 
So, Jamaro, welcome. We, we missed you for the last couple of weeks, and uh, but you were back with us last week. And, uh, but it's good to have Jamara with us this morning at 7.40. Good morning, Enid. Our guests this morning are Carrie Sanders and Jennifer Kisling. Good, Good morning. They are with Loves and Fishes um, here in Enid. And Carrie, you are the executive director for Loves and Fishes. Mm -hmm. And um, Jennifer Kisling, you are the food drive chair. I am. Very good. So what is uh, Loaves and Fishes and how many families benefit from, from your work in this community? Yeah, um, Loaves and Fishes is a food and resource center um, here in Enid. We operate a client choice food pantry where we're a little bit different than any other food pantry where we actually give them a choice of the food that they're able to take home with them. Um, right now, we're serving about 800 families every month, so we're staying very busy at the pantry. Wow. So, how families find you? Well, um, they find us through a lot of resources, um, but uh, we are located at 701 East Main. Mm -hmm. um, we're right across the street from the KFC there. And we're open uh, four days a week. We're open Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. Our hours are Monday and Wednesday from 1 to 4. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're open from 3 to 6 p.m. Okay. And um, I visited your webpage, and I found out a lot of the work that you guys are doing in this community. Um, let me ask you, how, how can people help? If, if you need volunteers, how can they reach you and also what um, what donations are accepted you said that you you operate differently that people actually have a choice on the the items the food items that they can take home um, but what items are needed yeah that's a really good question mm -hmm. the three things that we always need more of are food on the shelves um, volunteers to help and then money in order to buy food to put on the shelves um, as far as our biggest needs for food right now, mm -hmm. we're getting into the winter and we're needing a lot of um, really hearty soups. Um, it makes a really great meal for people um, and uh, that's something that we've been running short on. Um, something else uh, that people don't always think to donate is um, household and hygiene items. We do have a section where we um, have cleaning products, um, uh, household items, um, just things that they would need. Mm -hmm. um, but we are also able to take perishable donations where we have a very large commercial cooler and a commercial freezer so that we oh. can take things like dairy, eggs, um, and uh, even frozen meat. Um, if any of, their, uh, any of you are hunters out there, we do have a program called Hunters for Hungry where if you shoot a deer, you can take it to um, Big Country Meat Market and um, they will process it for us and um, we will pick it up and put it in our freezer. Huh, that's, that's really interesting because when you think about food drive, you think about cans and, and boxes, how, like we're showing right here, mm -hmm. but not perishable items. Mm -hmm. So it's really good to know. If someone wants to donate that kind of item, obviously they can't put it on their porches. Right. So they have to contact you and you'll pick it up or, or set up a time where they can deliver to the to the center? Absolutely. We have volunteers um, in our warehouse that are able to um, accept those donations um, every day. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are the best days um, to bring by those perishable items so that we have time to put it directly in the cooler or freezer um, right then. But we always need other items such as canned or boxed foods as well. Um, they go very well um, off the shelf. Thank you. Now, Jennifer, since you're working or volunteer mm -hmm. for the food drive, when is the next food drive? Our food drive is coming up Sunday, November 8th. Mm -hmm. It's from 1 to 4. Um, this is the Horn of Plenty food drive that's been going on in Enid for over 30 years. I grew up in Enid and you just knew when fall hit, you put those groceries on your front porch and volunteers were going to come by to pick those up. and. Thankfully, they have gifted that to Loaves and Fishes because we are open four days a week and we're serving so many families each month. Mm -hmm. They chose us as the resource to continue their work that they created. 
So Sunday, November 8th from 1 to 4, folks will be coming by your doorstep. Please have your food out by 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got 72 routes we'll be running all through Enid. And picking up that food, they'll be bringing it back to Loaves and Fishes, and then I'll have more volunteers receiving that food and putting it in our warehouse so we're ready to stock the shelves. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, if, if someone forgets, for example, they can still contact the center and maybe visit from four days a week, you said you're, you're open, uh, yeah. Monday through Thursday? We're even there on Friday to accept donations. Okay, so, okay. yes. Now, how can someone volunteer? if they're interested sure, in being absolutely. part of this, uh, of this work. All of my routes are covered, thankfully. Mm -hmm. In fact, we were able to open five new routes this year. We've had so many volunteers um, step up to the plate. But I do need help on the receiving team end, and then also to pick up the yard signs at the conclusion of, this, um, of the, the drive. We'll be putting those up next Wednesday to remind people to put their food out, but we have to have somebody go around and right. pick all those up. So if they want to give me a call at Loaves and Fishes, mm -hmm. um, I think the number's on the screen. It's mm -hmm. 540-9830. Um, just give me a call and I would be happy to uh, hook them up with some jobs. We've always got stuff to do down at the pantry. Wonderful. And I know there's, there's a lot of people that want to help in the community, but they don't know how to reach out mm -hmm. or how to find um, a contact in the organization to be part of. Also, they don't know what they're job will be right. and maybe they, they get anxious thinking oh maybe this will be too much but I think uh, every little bit of time that we can volunteer it can make a difference. We have an amazing <coughs> volunteer base and we're very good about making sure it's the job they want to do and it fits the time that they have. Some people have a lot of time and some people don't have very much. Right. We'll make sure we have a job for them. Well thank you for, for visiting with us this morning. Um, like Steve and Sarah mentioned earlier it's a the season for giving, it's coming, it's around the corner, but um, giving it's every single day. Mm -hmm. This is a year-round organization, not just for Thanksgiving. So if you want to reach out, um, the number again, it's on the screen, 580-540-9830. And you can contact Carrie Sanders or uh, Jennifer Kisling if you are interested in volunteer at this wonderful organization in Enid. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for being with us. Now let's watch our department head uh, video. And this morning we have our community development director, Chris Bowers video. Enjoy. Welcome to community development. I'm Chris Bauer, planning administrator. The mission of community development is to provide oversight and administrative review functions of zoning, growth, and sustainability of the community. This involves comprehensive planning, project development, subdivision development. Our goal is to help citizens with developmental projects by providing hands-on assistance. We frequently lend guidance with site development plans, use by review, land use changes, subdivision plats, and lot splits. We look forward to serving you for your next residential, commercial, and industrial development please contact me at the number or email on our website. Thank you. Good morning, Nina. It is 7.48 on this cool Thursday morning. It's mostly clear outside, Sarah, 44 degrees. Holding steady at 44. High today is going to be 61. But the weather's going to change for Friday. And I kind of, we need the rain, but there's so many events. There's some high school ball games. And we also have uh, a runway extension uh, ribbon cutting tomorrow. Oh, do we? So we've got a lot of dignitaries coming in at the Woodring Regional Airport, and so we'd like some dry weather for that. I'd like to remind everybody uh, that next Tuesday we'll have our city commission meeting, and uh, that will be uh, broadcast on channel 12 and 112. And as you can see there on the graphic, that's next Tuesday, November 3rd. Also, there is a special call city commission meeting that will air at 12 noon today. And so when in doubt, just go to channel 12 or 112, or you can also go to enatv.org, and then you can find out a lot of the programs that we have, but also with the city commission broadcasts and stuff like that. So I think it's time for the bow tie yes, guy. Once, that, one more time. In case you missed it, um, here is Derek with what's going on. Good morning, Enid. Oklahoma's statewide ban against texting while driving will go into effect Sunday, November 1st, and carries a $100 fine. Google Fiber will consider Oklahoma City for its super-fast broadband network. According to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, 
Oklahoma fourth graders show significant reading improvement in 2015, which is the third largest gain in the country. Saturday, OU plays Kansas at 2.30 p.m. in Lawrence, Kansas. It will air on FS1. And OSU plays Texas Tech in Texas at 2.30 p.m. It will air on ESPN. Last night, Oklahoma City Thunder had its first game of the season against the San Antonio Spurs. The score was Oklahoma City 112, San Antonio 106. And game two of the World Series was also last night. Kansas City Royals 7, New York Mets 1. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Stephen, Sarah. And a typical World, World Series series comes down to pitching. And both teams are probably the best for each league, are the best uh, pitching. And I'm kind of surprised the Royals are 2-0. Oh. I thought it would be at least a 1-1 one, one deal. But anyway, typical World Series comes down to the two best teams. Are you going so. for a specific team or? No, I'm, I'm rooting for the Royals. Yeah. Yeah. But I like the Mets as well. But I'm rooting for the Royals. So anyway. Well, let's take a look at the three-day forecast, Sarah. Help us out here, if you would on uh, what's going to go on for the weather-wise for the next three days? Yes, as you can see on the screen, um, we're going to stay pretty cool this weekend under 76. It's going to be a bit cloudy and, of course, some rain tomorrow. Okay. What's, and Sunday looks like kind of the same? Sunday looks... I, did, I didn't notice on Sunday. Sunday looks to be our warmest day. Okay. We're going to be at 76, yes. So Sunday looks like a gorgeous day. We'd like to remind everybody we're still looking for uh, high school students and grade school and mid-high. Uh, mid I'm trying to figure out what the mid-level school are. Uh, students are. If you are interested in uh, being on television, play the piano or a musical instrument, recite a poem or anything like that, we want to showcase your talent. So in grades 1 through 12, contact us here at ETN at 540-8918, and we would like to put your child, your, your grandchild, uh, on television. And we will, we've got some uh, students that are playing keyboards, and then we have a young lady that's been singing. And so we would like to showcase our hometown talent, that's for sure. Good morning, Enid. On this Thursday, October 29, we're running out of days of October with Halloween around the corner. We're going to be falling back, and then we got November 1, so much going on. And to fill us in on, again, what's going on for the weekend, here's Derek one more time. Well, this is what going, what's going on. United Way Chili Wing Chili Cook-Off will be tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Enid Event Center. The cost of the tickets are $5. The Enid Symphony Orchestra will have a flamenco pianist, Ariadna Castellanos. And that's at the Enid Symphony Center. From That'll be Saturday, 8 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. Tickets are $30 and $70. And the Kiwanis, Enid Kiwanis Club will host a Halloween train from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. That will be Saturday at Meadow Lake Park, and the tickets are $1. And that is what's going on this weekend. Back to you, Steve and Sarah. Okay, Derek, thank you very much. I think we have time this morning for Tech Talk. And uh, I sure hope we do. If we don't, then I'm in trouble. But uh, I think we have time, and we'll, we'll, uh, I know we have uh, our pet coming up. So let's run our Adopt the Pet promo, and then we'll uh, keep uh, moving on this morning. Thank you for joining us. Are you wanting to bring home a new family member? don't know where to look? There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. the Enid Animal Shelter or visit our Facebook page. Adopt. And All right, so you see the number right there that you can help out if you want to adopt a pet. Let's see if we can get this cutie on TV this morning. Good morning, Enid. It's 754. Again, holding steady at 44 degrees. We have the cutest little 
would you say cute little pit bull? I mean, there's always this association with pit bull, but look at this precious puppy dog and those bright lights. If you were staring at these bright lights, you'd be hiding it as well. We'd like to welcome to uh, Good Morning Enid, Shana Manuel. Shana, welcome. We appreciate you being here this morning. Shana just joined the city of Enid and she's at the animal control office and she's great with pets and she brought, uh, what's our, is Lulu, is this Lulu? Lulu, yes. Sarah, tell us about Lulu, because I think she is ready to be adopted. Yes, Lulu is six <laughs> months, and she's super sweet and loves to take pictures. Um, she would make a great cuddle buddy, um, for sure, um, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, and she's available today if anybody's looking to adopt. Um, like you said, it's, it's, she's pretty adorable, and she is a pit bull mix, so. Yeah. Do we know how much it costs to, is there... Does it say how much it costs? No, it doesn't. Because sometimes the fee varies, you know, and sometimes the fee is already paid for. I'm not sure, but we might need to find out. We want to remind everybody that Lulu's going to be on our Facebook page. And so we'll take a picture of Lulu and get her on Facebook along with Shana. And um, not that Shana's up for adoptions. Saint <laughs> Shana's not up for adoption. She's taken, okay? It's just Lulu, our pit bull. But look at that precious puppy dog. And when I see these dogs, like I said, they need to have a home. They don't need to be on TV. So, well, Shannon, thanks for coming by this morning. We appreciate the work that you're doing with uh, Animal Control. And uh, again, give 249. Thank you, Penn, for putting that number up there again. Can you hear Lulu? She's kind of whining a little bit. She goes, <laughs> I want to go home with somebody. Take me home. 249 4910 to uh, adopt Lulu, and uh, what a precious little puppy She's dog. She's so playful. Yeah. Okay, it's 44 degrees, mostly clear skies. Good morning, Enid, on this October 29th. And uh, we have a little break here, and we'll be back with this uh, other department head video. Welcome to Community Development. I'm Chris Bauer, Planning Administrator. The mission of community development is to provide oversight and administrative review functions of zoning, growth, and sustainability of the community. This involves comprehensive planning, project development, subdivision development. Our goal is to help citizens with developmental projects by providing hands-on assistance. We frequently lend guidance with site development plans, use by review, land use changes, subdivision plats, and lot splits. We look forward to serving you for your next residential, commercial, and industrial development. Please contact me at the number or email on our website. Thank you. In case you didn't see Chris the first time, you could see him the second time. <laughs> so anyway, we appreciate the work that Chris done. Uh, welcome back. How was Canada, by the way? It was very cold, but like you very said, cold. I'm from California, degrees, right? so it was like 40 degrees. Oh, so very cold. Oh, very, my very word. Cold. Miserable. Oh, <laughs> good golly, break out the gloves. I did have gloves. Oh, oh my <laughs> word. Yeah. So, well, we're glad that you're back. What was, what was the highlight, real quick? Uh, it, Niagara Falls was definitely one of the highlights. It, it was actually the reason why it went, and okay. I loved it. It was really nice. All right. Well, Sarah, we're glad that you're back. Thanks for coming back. So... And thank you for joining us on Good Morning Enid. We want you to um, visit us each Thursday morning at 7.30. It is the fastest 30 minutes for us, that's for sure. And we want to thank all, everybody from Loaves and Fishes for being here this morning. Fall food drive, so help out if you can. Thank you so much, everyone. Make it a great day. We'll see you next week.